The Lord is my shepherd. A refrain of the psalm that we hear so often, probably the most popular psalm from the 150 psalms we have in the Old Testament, the book of song, the book of praise. The Lord is my shepherd. Jesus takes the theme of God as the shepherd and repeats this theme in the gospel from which we hear today. Jesus says of himself that he is the shepherd, the sheepfold. He uses this beautiful imagery of shepherd. The ancient people knew so well that unless they choose the right leader, they will be led astray. And throughout their history, they knew that this would happen. They went from having good leaders who led them to the promised land, who led them to the right way of living, to having bad leaders who led them away from God, away from prosperity, away from hope. And Jesus here very clearly tells us that we have to be careful who we choose to follow. Who do we choose to follow? Who is the shepherd of my life? I'll tell you a little secret if you haven't figured it out yet. Everyone wants to be your shepherd. Everyone wants to lead you. Everyone wants to sell you something. Everyone wants to be in charge of you. Now we could easily say, well, I'm in charge of myself. I don't follow anyone. I can, I can do my own thing. But we really don't. We always look for someone to inspire us, to lead us, to show us. If I talk to people, especially young people, and I, I encounter people who don't really believe in God or follow God, they think they're very independent. But all you have to do is ask them about what they're interested in, what they like to follow on Facebook, what kind of ideas they have. And very clearly, very quickly, we discover that they are not in charge of their own life. They are not their own shepherds. They follow certain leaders, certain people, certain ideas. We all need someone to point a way to us, to give us hope, to show us how we are called to live. And Jesus warns us by saying, I am the good shepherd. I am the one who you are called to follow. If you follow me, you will get lots of good things in your life. But most importantly, if you follow me, you will have no time for the false shepherds, for the false ideas, for the evil shepherds who want to lead you astray. What is it that Jesus offers us? In his leadership, first of all, Jesus is the good shepherd mainly because he kept his eyes fixed on the Father, God the Father, who is the ultimate shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The original Psalm 23 referred to Yahweh, God, as the shepherd. The Jewish people knew that psalm very well. Jesus has the ability to lead, to guide, to heal, to strengthen, because he is so connected to the Father. What is it that the shepherd offers us, the true shepherd, God the shepherd? Read the psalm and see what resonates with you. Here is what I love and what I want in my life. Here's what I want. He restores my soul. 
is the first phrase. The Lord, when I follow him, he restores my soul. Now think about that. How many of us, we encounter each other and we say, how are you? Well, it's been a long winter. People ask me, well, how, how's it going? I say, well, it's been a long 47 years. <laughs> or whatever it is for you. Sometimes we feel that way, we feel tired. And it's not that we're not doing the right things, we're not exercising, we're not, you know, having a good life, but somehow there is this need for our soul to be restored. And we can look to many sources to restore our soul. We can listen to a beautiful piece of music, we can go for a walk in nature. And all of that in some ways helps us. But ultimately, the Lord who is my shepherd restores my soul. He is the one. What else can he do for us? Another beautiful line. For you are with me, it says here. I'm not afraid because you are with me. To know that God is with us is a very, very reassuring uh, and strengthening thing. The Lord is with me. How many people in our world feel lonely, isolated, looking for meaning, purpose, looking for something to get them out of their funk? You are with me. The presence of God is very important. God is the shepherd. Like the shepherd, he is present. He is present. We talk about in the Eucharist that we believe in the real presence. If we follow the Lord, make him the shepherd of my life. Which means what? Which means that I go to him. When I'm down, I go to Him. When I'm frustrated, I go to Him. Not to Facebook or YouTube or other ways in which we can get distracted. All it does is, you know, we kick the can down the road of our frustration. Through prayer and sacred scripture, we encounter the shepherd who is present to us. You are with me. Can I really say that I sense God's presence with me? And it's a real presence. It's not imagined. It's not some kind of presence because we remember. Through the resurrection, we believe that Jesus is alive. And he is really present. And if we experience his presence, you are with me, then we have no fear. Here's another line. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. We look forward not only to the glory of heaven, which fills us with hope, but also for the glory, we work, look towards the glory of the kingdom of God that's present among us. You shall dwell in the house of the Lord if the Lord is your shepherd, if we make him our shepherd. The one to whom we go each day, with whom we spend time in prayer each day. The one who helps us, reassures us that he is really present in my moments of joy and in my moments of frustration, heaviness. He restores my soul. 
and I dwell in his presence, in his house. All of that is given to the ones who choose to make the Lord their Lord. Jesus is my shepherd. I shall not be afraid. I shall not be negative. I shall not be overwhelmed. I shall not be pessimistic. I shall not trust this world and the leaders of this world as the ones who are going to lead me to some kind of place of utopia. Only God. Only God can restore us from within. That's the first point and the longest one. The Lord is my shepherd. Jesus is my shepherd. I go back to that. I have to renew that in my prayer life in a way I, am, I encounter this world. He is the source of everything that is good. Now the second thing is, we are called to share in the ministry of the Lord who is the shepherd. We are called to be, in as much as we are connected to Jesus, shepherds for others. We call priests our shepherds. But we all share in a very real way in the priesthood of Jesus Christ as baptized Christians. And so, the Lord is my shepherd, but then in accepting Jesus as my Lord and shepherd, I am now able to become a source of, of pathway, of shepherding, of gateway for others. We are all called to have a leadership place in our own individual lives, as a parent, as a priest as a teacher, as a neighbor, as a human being, I am called to be an extension of God who is a shepherd. What does that mean? Can people experience the goodness of the, of the good shepherd in the way we are? Are we able to offer them that which we have received from God. Can people say that when they walk away from having an encounter with us, they feel restored? They feel that we are really with them, that we understand, that we listen. Can people feel the presence of the Good Shepherd through us. We are all called to be that presence of Jesus. But it begins in our personal encounter with Jesus every day in our individual prayer and communal prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing else I shall want. What a beautiful prayer to continue to pray each day. The Lord will do it. He will give us all the gifts that he promises in the psalm if we continue to come back to him and say, you are my shepherd, Lord. I trust in you and I love you above all. Amen. Amen.